Do you want to learn how we can apply object tracking on top of the new YOLOV10 model? So just a few days ago, YOLOV10 was just released and it is a pretty cool model. It is significantly faster compared to all the other YOLO models in the YOLO family. But again, we're going to see how does it perform, does it have the same accuracy, but this model is very fast. So we're going to see how we can apply object tracking on top of that model, where we're both going to take a look at strong sort, but also byte tracker all the code will go through it line by line also how you can set up the yolo v10 model run inference extract all the results so you can use it in your own applications and projects and then at the end we're going to run object tracking with yolo v10 on a live webcam so let's just go inside the yolo v10 github repository we can see all the code here but the most important thing is these comparisons with the other yolo models and object detection models out there so we can see in red here, we have YOLO V10. It is significantly faster compared to all the other models and is around two milliseconds in latency. So that means it takes two milliseconds to process a single image. We can also see the Coco average precision up here on the y-axis in percentage, where it also does a pretty good job and basically outperforms all the other YOLO models. So we're going to see how we can use this model here, pip install it and all of that, and also download the weight. You can just Press on these ones here and it will download the weights to your computer. We can drag them into our weights folder later on. But the only thing that you have to do is basically just pip install this GitHub repository and we are good to go. So let's just jump straight into our code editor where we have all the code both for the tracking and also the YOLO v10 model. First of all here, I'm just going to activate my YOLO environment because this is not active with Ultralytics yet. When I'm making this video, might be at a later point, you can just use the model directly from Ultralytics. But right now we have need to activate the environment and pip install it from the YOLO v10 GitHub repository. So here, go on to activate and then I have an environment called YOLO. There we go. And then we can just paste in this code here. So then we need to go in and pip install it. So pip install dash Q, git plus, and then we just have the URL here for the GitHub repository. We're ready to go. I just hit enter and it's going to pip install YOLO v10 on your local environment. So after that is done, we pretty much have everything. Make sure that you have all the other dependencies like PyTorch, OpenCV, and so on. You can pip install that directly as well. So right now, let's just minimize this terminal and let's go up and take a look at the code. I just have a single script that does everything for us, both object detection is going to create a model, both for object detection, but also a model for tracking. And then it's going to put that together, it does object detection, take the results, throw it into the tracker. So the difference between object tracking and object detection is that object detection we detect on each individual frame, where if you're using tracking, we can act like track the same objects over a number of frames. So that is act like tracking over time. So first of all here, we import the different modules, so import Torch, OpenCV, Utils, Ultralytics, and so on, and also supervision for visualizing our detections. And then I have a repo here, which is called ByteTrack and also StrongSort. I have a course teaching all the theory behind optic trackers, how ByteTrack uh, is implemented, StrongSort, we dive into the code line by line and see how can you actually like, implement optic trackers from scratch. We go over the Kalman filter, all the theory and so on behind that. And then we set up the whole system and pipeline. So all the code will be available in there. So definitely check that out. And also, if you want to learn how to implement these trackers from scratch. So right now, let's go down. We can then just set a flag here, which of the trackers we want to use. If we want to use strong sword or byte track, where strong sword, it is a bit better when we want to do re-identification, which means that once we lose track of our objects, it can act like re-identify that object and assign the old ID to that object again. So it uses a neural network that looks at the visual features and basically just matches that with previous ones. So it is a bit slower when you're using strong sword compared to byte track, where byte track is the, probably the fastest tracker out there and there's also a bunch of different variations of strong sword we have sword strong sword deep sword and so on but these are very good trackers so right now we just have our object detection class could also be object tracking we do an initialization where we specify the capture index so right now we're going to have this working on a webcam any USB camera that you have attached connected to your computer but it could also just be a video file that you throw in First of all here, we just check if CUDA is available on our computer or else we're just going to use the CPU. Right now I'm on my MacBook, so we're going to use the CPU, but if we have an NVIDIA computer, 
then we can use CUDA and it will be significantly faster. I've been running this on a 4090 and so on, and we're running like 100 frames per second with both optic detection and also tracking. And also to be clear, this new Yolvi 10 model is significantly faster compared to all the other models because it basically just removes the non-maximum compression in the post-processing for optic detection. Then I have a function here for loading the model. We're going to take a look at that in just a second. We extract the class names here from our model as well, and we set up our box annotator with supervision. So right now we can just set up our reunification weights as well. So I have a weight folder over to the left where I have all of them. I just got the weights for Yolovi 10 from the GitHub repository, but they will be available with Autolytics as well. So it will download it automatically once you set up the code. So we have a Yolvi 10 model here, and then we also have this OS net, which is for reindification for our strong sort tracker. So that is in here, and then we have our tracker, which just check which of the trackers we have chosen, and then we set up the configuration based on that. Inside our trackers, we have bad track and we have strong sort. We set up the different thresholds, so the, the threshold for our tracking, matching, and also our tracking buffer. So how many tracks do we actually like want to buffer when we do our tracking over a number of frames, and also the frame rate. For strong sort, we have some other different parameters and so on that we need to specify. Again, I go into details and explain all of these parameters in my Yolvi 8 tracking course. So we have the max distance between the different detections that we have before we just discard or remove that track. We have max intersection over union distance, so how much is the bounding box and so on moving from frame to frame. Max age, how long do we want to keep each ID and track inside of all our tracks before we discard it or like basically just terminate our track. So let's say that we have 10 detections, then we miss five detections. And then if we have a max age of five, we would like to like remove that track from our tracker. So we're not tracking that object any longer. We have max unmatch, and in it here, so it's basically just like how many frames do we want to detect our optic before we initialize a track and assign an ID. We have some budget and so on for data association. We have our load model function. We just set up YOLO from Autolytics. We specify the weights. So this is the YOLO V10 nano model. We fuse it and then we just return our model. Now we can go down and call a predict. So we just take in our frame, we have our model, we take our frame, throw it through the model and we get the results out. And then these results here, they can be extracted and thrown into our object tracking algorithm. We also have a function here just for drawing the results. And this is the function that extracts all the results and also applies the tracking. But you can use this function. It can be for drawing. It can be for like triggering different types of systems. So this is the output from your update detection and tracking project. If we take a look at it, I just have some lists here to extract all the relevant information. We have a for loop running through all the results. So this is all the detections that we have from our object detection model, which is YOLO V10. To start with here, we extract the class ID. We print the results for the bounding boxes just so we can take a look at it. What does this act like contain? These results and the bounding boxes here or like the boxes is for optic detection. We check if the class ID here is equal to zero, but means that we have no detections or like the class ID is zero, then we basically just continue. If it's greater than, we're basically just going to set the class ID equal to the first one. But these things here doesn't really matter too much. It was just something that I was playing around with. You could also check for specific classes. If you only want to detect a person, you can check if the class ID is equal to zero. And if it's a person, you can basically just run through all the code. And if it's not, you can just continue and it's just going to take the next prediction. So this is how you can filter out different classes if you're using the Coco classes. Right now, we're just going to extract all the results. So from results, we can extract boxes, X, Y position. So this is the top left corner and the bottom right corner. We have our CPU converted to NumPy. So we just have NumPy arrays. We append it to the list that we have up at the top. So these are each individual prediction that we basically just extract. And then we put it up into our other list outside of our for loop. Then we create these detections from supervision. So we just specify our XYs, confidence, and also class IDs. So we can use this to visualize them later on. Then we're going to extract labels. So first of all, we're going to set up some strings. So we have our class ID, and we also have our confidence once we're going to annotate our frame. Then we can annotate it with supervision. So self.boxannotator.annotate. We specify the frame that we want to annotate on, the detections we want to annotate, and also the labels that we want to put on top of our detections. Now we can then return our frame and our bounding boxes and visualize them. 
Now we have a call method here, which is basically like the main function inside of our class. We open up our video capture with our capture index, which could be a video file. You can just specify it directly here and it's going to run a video. But right now I'm going to run it on a webcam. We assert that this webcam here or like this capture is opened. If it's not, it's just going to terminate the program. If the flag here, save video is set, we're going to save the results. So all the results with all the annotations, we're just going to write that to a file so we can play back that later, send it to whoever and what else we want to do with that video. We set our tracker and then we check if our tracker has this attribute model and also warm up. And then we're going to warm up our tracker model before we act like run. This is necessary for some AI models. We have our outputs, current frame, previous frame, and then we have our while true. So this is basically just going to load in each individual frame from a video capture, either if it's a video file or the webcam. Then we're going to call this predict function. So we have our model we call predict. This is basically just taking the frame, throwing it through the model, we get the results out. Then we take our results, throw it into our draw result function, which just extracts all the results, does the annotation and returns the frame. So then we can use this frame here to go down and update our tracker together with our results. So right now down here again, we can go through all the results. So this up here was basically just for update detection. Now we have another for loop running through all the results for our tracker. So right now we have our tracker initialized right up here. We have a camera update with the previous frames and also the current frames, because when we're doing object tracking, we track objects over a number of frames, so over time. Then we can call this update method on top of our tracker. So it's basically just an update and predict state, which is the same as the Kalman filter. All of that is within my course. Result frame, we extract the output. So this is the output that we can enumerate or have another for loop running over. And then we can extract the outputs with the bounding boxes, track IDs and the top left corner. So we can visualize that. And then once we call this instance of our object detection class, it's just going to call the call method inside of the class and it's basically up and running with our while loop. So this is pretty much it. We don't have to do anything else. We have our weights over to the left here. We also have the reunification networks. We have our strong sort algorithm. We have our byte tracker. If we just shortly go in and take a look at the code, I won't dive into details with this because it will basically be like a whole course. I have like hours of videos going through all of this and it will just be boring throughout this video. So right now, this is basically like everything that is in there. So again, we have the Kalman filter. All the different tracking algorithms are based on the Kalman filter. We set our base tracker here. Again, it's basically just taking the bounding boxes. Then it does a prediction state. It takes the next frame. So it always uses the previous frames and the current frame. And then it tries to do a prediction of where that bounding box or object is at now. And then it updates it based on the actual prediction that we get from our YOLO v10 model. We can both do multi prediction, single prediction, then we get some activation and then we can basically just put the track ID on top of our visualizations from supervision. So this is pretty much it all up here at the top. We did our update detection. Now we do our tracking where we are just interested in extracting the bounding box and also the track ID so we can put that on top of our annotations. That's pretty much the whole pipeline. We don't have to do any more else. We have like 150 lines of code. We have this class here. Everything will be available inside my course and so on. I'll probably be able to put this one up here for my GitHub just to get the whole code structure for the class. If we go down at the bottom, we then just put the text out with FPS. So we calculate how many frames per second is this running? This is running on a CPU in my case. So we're only going to get like 8, 10 frames per second with the Yolva 10 model and the byte tracking algorithm. We show our frame here. So the frame will both contain the supervision annotations and also our tracked IDs. If you save the video, we're going to write out the frame. If we hit Q or like escape on a keyboard at any time, we're going to terminate the program and basically just go out of this while loop. If we have saved video, we release our video. So we actually like make sure that we save it. Now we can create an instance of our object detection model. We specify the capture index, but this could also be a video file. We have our detector, and then we basically just have a lot of conversions back and forth between the bounding boxes, top left corner, width height, left, top left corner, bottom right corner, and so on. So all that boring stuff, there's a lot to keep track of, but also just the whole data structure that keeps track of the bounding box, class ID, track ID, confidence score, and so on. 
It also has a matching algorithm, base track. If we take a look at Strong Sword, it is very similar. So all of them is pretty much building on top of each other. But now we also have this reindification model. So it uses neural networks to do matching and reindification and tracking. So this is pretty cool. We initialize a tracker here. All the code is in here. So it's basically like a whole repo with a bunch of different files, as you can see here. Like there's just tons of different files. Again, we have the Kalman filter, linear assignment, neural network matching, and so on. You can also just see the track here. So this is basically just where our data structures will be saved. So there's tons of different code in here. Like I'm going through all of that inside my course. It will take hours to go through here. So right now I'm just showing you the base class with object tracking, YOLOV10 and byte tracker. So now we're ready to run it. We don't have to do anything else than running this Python script. So right now it's just called pip YOLO tracking and we should hit enter and we should be good to go. So right now it should open up the video stream in just a second. We're running on CPU and there we go. We have me up in the frame. We have ID one up here at the top assigned to me. Right now we're only taking a look at that. So we have a person, we have confidence score. I can move back and forth and now we keep track of me. So instead of just doing predictions on each individual frame, we miss our detection. It is going to jump back and forth and so on. We can also play around with the confidence score. But now we assign an ID. We can now both do object tracking. We can do counting so let's say that we have a conveyor belt where objects are actually moving on that conveyor belt we can then do counting how many objects are passing we can do image analytics traffic analytics pretty much just everything that you can imagine most computer vision applications when they work in real time we want to apply object tracking on top of the detections basically just so we can get our id here and don't get double detections and all of that stuff around 10 frames per second here running on my MacBook. So that's pretty good with tracking. You can see it's pretty responsive as well. So this could actually work just out of the box on a CPU in real world applications and projects. It looks very good. Down here at the bottom, we can see all the extractions. So basically just X, Y values, confidence scores, and so on that we're printing. I just try some other objects here. So here we have a cell phone. We have ID6. We can move it around. We keep track of it. So it's still ID6. It actually like did a reunification there, so that you saw that. So it just missed detection. Let's go back again. ID six. ID six. So now here it act like swap, probably because the bounding box was act like just moving too much in the frame. So that is also one of the parameters, as I mentioned. So if the bounding box from one frame to the other is moving too much, we basically just delete that track as well. But now we can see we can actually like move it around pretty fast and it still keeps track. Of course, if we have more frames per second, it will be better and so on, but this looks pretty good. This is how we can run object tracking on a live webcam. Few lines of code, it's not really too much. We have the whole class structure, we specify the tracking model, object detection model. Now we even have the whole code base up and running. You can just take YOLV8, YOLV9, YOLV10, and arbitrary object detection model. We just need to make sure that the output detections are in the correct format. And then we're good to go. You can apply this in your own computer vision applications and projects. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you have learned a ton. Definitely try this out on your own. The new YOLO V10 model, the new member in the YOLO family. It is very good. It is very fast. It can run significantly faster compared to the other models from the test that I've done. I'm also going to create videos where I do comparisons between all the models. I also have a video where we do custom update detection. So how can you basically take your data set? I label the data set. I generate images from Python. I open up the webcam, generate images. We label them, put them into a Google Colab notebook, train it, export the model and run live inference with a custom model. So I have videos for all of that. Definitely check it out. And then I just hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning. So we also have an AI career program if you want to learn how to land AI jobs and get AI freelance work. I teach you everything in there. We have programs, all my technical courses, weekly live calls, personal help. And I'll love to have you guys in there help you out in any possible way. You can check out the program down in the description and the community. And then I'll just see you guys in there.